what this uh, helper object iterator does, it does a couple of things. Well, number one, let me provide some more space so we can see both the code and the uh, uh, iterator I'll name it uh, iter uh, equals uh, my list my what I my array I called it my array my array uh, iterator so let's uh, examine what what we have so far so I have my array and it's an array of, uh, you know, an object which somehow stores inside, you know, contains this array and store references <coughs> to integers, to those integer objects. So this is my array, right? my array. And it's an instance of array list. I have that. Now I'm creating this iterator named iter okay and this is a helper object which is created by uh, asking the collection to provide uh, to create it and provide us with the reference so we don't say new because we don't know how to create it and, and especially not not how to create it but how to properly initialize it. But the array iterator method, which is provided by, by the collection itself, uh, is capable of manufacturing this helper object named iterator, which allows us to navigate through our, uh, uh, our collection. So what happens is why this iterator is important is that internally it stores a reference to our collection so once created once the iterator helper object is created it retains a re internally it hides within itself a reference to the actual uh, uh, to the actual collection it also has something inside of it we don't know what this is maybe some sort of an index which logically keeps track the position, keeps track the position uh, inside our collection. Now, when you just created it by saying, "Okay, my array, give me, give me this helper iterator object," uh, and you initialize a reference, and this is the type, the generic type that helper object really is. It's an iterator which is specific to, uh, you know, iterator that is capable of referring to integers. And integer, in our case, is, of course, the wrapper class for integer primitive type. So once created, it actually points, let me erase this little, little you know, indicator, it actually is pointing to uh, the beginning of our collection, so it points somewhere, you know, to to the to the to the first element. However, we know that my array can be empty. So potentially, if we try to use this as is to access an element inside an array, maybe a total failure because the collection may be empty, right? Because when we created our collection uh, this way, it was completely empty. Only then we populated, populated it with some value. So it has this very important method uh, that um, uh, we can do it. Uh, uh, so we are done with the initialization. So we can say iterator equals um, My array iterator. Again. And we can check for has next.
So first, um, uh, the the uh, the interface of uh, of the iterator object is actually extremely simple. It has method named has next, and it has method named next. So next advances the iterator to the next element, right? So it sequentially can whenever we say next right whenever we say next we advance to the next element inside of our collection so the iterator provides this uh, functionality to go to the next element and uh, another uh, uh, another important uh, condition that we can check is that if the iterator has next right so uh, um, uh, if it has the next element, uh, it will return true. So if collection is empty to begin with, iterator has next will return false. And this loop will never execute. But our collection is populated, so has next will return true and say, yes, there is a next thing. And um, interestingly, uh, you have only one chance to do this because as soon as you say next you are advancing your iterator but at the same time uh, this gives you access uh, access to your integer right so this way we can print them or we can examine them so because we're we're actually extracting the uh, the integer similar to uh, to what was happening here in this advanced for loop. This was very simple. We just basically reproduce this. So um, um, so right here we could say uh, if equals one eleven. What we can do uh, here we could just print it. Just say system uh, dot out uh, dot print. And print uh, the uh, my int uh, value, uh, which will be printing 111 three times because I populated it three times. Then I can have a uh, new line. statement uh, at the end and uh, try to do exactly the same uh, work over here right uh, over here I can say print new line and do the same thing but uh, this should say int value right so uh, this statement I can recycle in here Uh, by saying if my int equals um, um, uh, if my int again I will say int value equals 111 uh, then I can print the same statement that I had before. Okay, I'm messing up my semicolon here, and I can do the same thing. Print, print my value. Uh, return this once again. So integer my int int value equals one extra parentheses here. So um. Also move 
this code away from here so we can have those two loops next to each other. And let's compare them both. 